Hey guys, NJ here. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, welcome to DCS. This is my favourite flight sim uh, to play in VR, which is why you can see my hands. Uh, I haven't actually done any DCS content for, well, literally years. One of the first videos I ever did that blew up was uh, a DCS startup tutorial of the A10 Warthog. Um, but as of late, I've been uh, spending a little bit more time in some of the older older aircraft and uh, today is definitely one of my favorites this is the p51d-30 um, which is just yeah the p51 was a, a, a real poster plane for me had definitely made a few airfix kits of these when I was a kid um, and yeah it's uh, just a module I had to buy in DCS because I, I really wanted to uh, get in the air and, and have a fly of this. DCS, if you haven't heard of it, is, uh, I th in my personal opinion, it's just the best flight simulator out there. The flight physics are absolutely incredib incredible, so much so that there are certain navies that are using it for, basic, uh, for some basic training now. Um, uh, having some GA time myself, I can say this is the closest feeling uh, that I've ever found in the simulator to the real thing um, and uh, not, that, not that I've ever actually flown a P-51D but in terms of, of the general handling of aircraft uh, in the game it's it really is fantastic the game itself is free um, so if you did want to tr download it and try it out as well as being able to use it in VR um, if you've got something like I have, which is the Oculus Quest with the uh, uh, the hand controllers, the hand tracking is absolutely fantastic. And in a module like this, and I believe in the free uh, T51 that comes with the game, uh, you can actually use your hands to physically grab the controls and move them around in free space. So whether you've got a joystick and throttle or not, you can actually still fly the plane. And the level of accuracy is quite astounding. It's perfectly... Uh, plausible to fly the and I have flown these on uh, several occasions just using the hand controls and it works really well works very well in the helicopters actually um, I do have an actual um, uh, an x56 which is a uh, throttle and stick and I do have some rudder pedals as well the reason I like using this stick is because it feels like the proper controls for me and I also have a whole ton of switches because I'm blind here in VR to the outside world I can very easily feel all the switches and they flick things in the cockpit I have it mapped to make it as easy as possible. So what we're going to do today, I've actually been into the mission editor and I've set up a course um, for a race out here in Syria. Um, and the race course is kind of off in that direction towards the sort of southeast. Uh, we're going to get this guy started up. I'm going to walk you through how uh, the P-51 is started up. We're going to taxi out to the runway there, take off on a southerly heading, Go up, find the start of the race course that will come carving down through the valleys uh, between two and three hundred miles per hour. Uh, hopefully, I won't crash. Um, and then once we finish the race course, we will come back here and land. So it should be uh, tremendous fun. So let's get started. So with the P51, the first thing we do is we put the flaps up. You can see they're down there. Now it's this yellow handle down here. I'm going to move it through its five positions all the way at the top. Uh, I've actually got that mapped. On my flight stick here so that guy's moved all the way to the top now those flaps won't actually come up because we haven't got any hydraulic pressure in the aircraft yet we won't get that until the engines running the hydraulic pressure is actually down there and if you can see me pointing to it and you can see that's reading zero so uh, once we get everything fired up that will start um, coming up to pressure and we should see the flaps coming up also the gear doors that are under the aircraft will also they're currently in their down position they will fold up when the uh, hydraulic pressure kicks in as well so you'll hear a noise for that uh, in the p51 you tend to work in a kind of clockwise pattern turning things on and then pre-flight checking and what have you i'll try and get through this as quickly as possible but i think it's pretty interesting to stop and talk about a few things along the way um, down here we got a couple of doors we got the uh, the ram air um, which we want to have all the way forward again i've got a uh, control set up for that and the carpet all the way forward as well uh, we have these three wheels here now these are the uh, the trims uh, and trims are very important when you're flying to keep the plane nicely uh, trimmed for a set airspeed and keep things in balance um, and actually you tend to find especially with these uh, prop driven planes that it's actually the rudder 
uh, that tends to get the most trimming so again these are things that I have mapped now we need to set that rudder um, off to the right now let's quickly talk about that so this has a massive Merlin engine in it's something crazy I think something like 27 litres it's just a monster same Merlin engine that went in the Spitfire although this one was built by Allison not not Allison as in my, the person who built the engine there might be an Allison that's built one um, it's Allison the company that made jet engines and the engines and what have you it's, it's um, built by them because um, this was built in the, uh, the good old US of A um, if you haven't already picked that up by the, the big star on the side there um, but yeah this engine and this enormous prop at the front produce a lot of torque and of course uh, while it's trying to rotate from our perspective it's trying to rotate that prop in a clockwise fashion it's going to want to twist the plane in the opposite direction and that massive moment of left uh, roll on the aircraft when we apply all this power and this torque what that effect has when we're going down the runway is it wants to lurch the plane off to the left so we counteract that by putting a load of right rudder in well not a load but a decent amount um, so what we're going to do I do this now normally we do this uh, kind of pre takeoff but I just get it out of the way now I'm going to trim the rudder off uh, to about six degrees to the right for takeoff and then once we're in flight and getting up to speed that will need to be neutralized again back to sort of closer to zero so that's that and then in terms of the elevator uh, that tends to sit pretty good for me um, about there which is about minus uh, about two degrees nose down don't need to touch the aileron trims uh, the next thing we need to do is uh, have a little look at the uh, throttle quadrant here now this is a constant speed propeller um, constant speed props work in a slightly different way to a, a standard uh, f kind of fixed pitch propeller uh, that you tend to find in things like Cessnas. These these are, I, I, again, we could do a whole video on this, but these are essentially doing for an airplane what gears do for a car. That's probably the easiest way to, to describe what's going on. Um, but up here, um, the bit that's kind of important to know is there's two main controls that you have to mess with here. One is the throttle, which is essentially controlling our power, um, which is um, measured up here on this style, this style here. This is the manifold pressure in inches. And then the other dial we have, which I have again on a physical control here, is this lever here. This is the propeller RPM. So we actually set an RPM for our propeller there. And then the pitch will adjust um, accordingly on the prop. Um, and that allows us to do sort of a high power setting with a low RPM for a very efficient uh, flight during cruise or at high altitude. And then you can throw well when you take off you have both you have a uh, high propeller rpm and high power you just throw everything at it um, but all of those things need managing uh, for an efficient flight and also to manage the engine temperatures because as with the real thing in this game if you mismanage the engine temperatures if you let things get too hot if your airspeed's low and it's not cooling properly you'll seize the engine uh, just like in the real thing you, you, and i've done that plenty of times where i've uh, seized the engine locked it up or i've gone to take off without letting the oil thin out and warm up just like you would in your car you let it warm up a bit before you drive off you know it's, it's all these uh, things are uh, even more important in an aircraft where you really don't want your engine failing so if you can't find a runway you're going to be making a hole in the ground or uh, swimming for it if you're on the coast like we are here so the uh, next thing we're going to do we've talked about those two things there's one more lever down here and that's this red lever that's the mixture lever so that will be for, at the minute it's in cutoff we'll move it to the auto kind of rich position here the auto rich which will basically chuck in fuel uh, we don't actually need to do that until it's actually part of the the, the, the main startup sequence but once the we get the engine coughing and spinning and it's about to jump to life, we throw that lever into rich into the run position, which will provide the fuel, <coughs> keep it rich, and we should be good. Hopefully, if this all goes well. The next thing we do is we work our way around. We've got the fuel booster pump there. We're going to turn that guy on. Won't come to life yet till the battery's on, but we do it now as we're working in this clockwise pattern. We've got the magnetos here, so these things shower the sparks into the cylinder head that help uh, ignite the fuel and air mixture that make the banging, gurgling noise that sounds so good on this Merlin. Again, we're going to turn that on just prior to starting the engines. We don't need to do that just yet. Just south of here, we've got the fuel shutoff valve. We want to make sure we put that into the on position, and we have the fuel tank selector to the left wing. Now, both of these wings are full of fuel. There is a third tank behind us, an auxiliary tank, which I look over my left shoulder, you can see. 
with a gauge we don't need to use that today um, um, what we're instead going to do is uh, we're going to be starting up on the left wing tank you can see the gauge is a little cup holder down there type of thing there's the gauge for the fuel in the left wing there's the gauge for the fuel in the right wing um, now you would select from the left to the right wing as the fuel depletes in the left wing you don't want to suddenly have a light left wing and a heavy right wing so you tend periodically to switch between the tanks to keep these two roughly level save you having to trim out the ailerons and mess around with that so that's what we're doing there that's all done and ready to go we don't need to mess with any of this here this stuff in front of the weapon stuff this is DCS digital combat simulator of course you can go and do dog fights and shooty stuff if that's your uh, if that's your bag for me it's more more about the aviating and the flying so I tend not to do an awful that but it is fun like I do it occasionally over here we got the battery panel uh, the only thing we need to worry about here we're going to turn the generator on and we're going to turn the master battery on now immediately we can hear some doors opening underneath us we'll let them do that do that uh, do their thing rather uh, the fuel booster has now come to life and we can check that because we actually have here on this dial that one on the right that's now showing just in the green that's our fuel pressure um, and we can see that's up so that's working on the left we've got oil pressure that's a zero at the minute and we got oil temperature which is about 18 degrees which is the ambient temperature here at the minute so that all makes sense um, now we're kind of in a position to get ready to start this thing up so the first thing we're going to do is prime the engine so we're going to squirt a little bit of fuel into these cylinders uh, to get a coughing and spluttering and on the verge of starting uh, in order to do that we're going to hold that prime switch up for about four seconds does the job uh, in a, uh, this is quite advanced for this one a lot of the other war, warbirds are the similar era they were it's like the Spitfire they had a priming pump which was a lever that you would pull in and out uh, to actually squirt fuel into the cylinder heads but we got it on a switch so let me just find that switch so we're going to prime four seconds one two three four and that's the priming done we're going to remove the guard on the start switch <clears throat> let's now turn on the magnetos uh, to both you've got left right and both uh, the reason one of the reasons you have to certainly is redundancy one set of magnetos fail the others will keep uh, keep the engine running so let's set both that's that done we're pretty much ready to go so we just need to crack the throttle a little bit uh, we're going to start cranking the engine uh, hopefully it will cough and jump to life if we haven't over primed it or if we have over primed it will just shoot some flames out the side I think I got it right though uh, once it starts and coughs we're then going to throw that mixture lever into the run position uh, give it some fuel and hopefully we'll be good for a nice clean start first time so uh, here we go let's crank the engine right lever down and there we go she started and the flaps are coming up as well which shows that we have hydraulic pressure and if we look down our little gauge I can see that needles now moved so yep hydraulic pressure is all good um, the other thing you are meant to do which I didn't I didn't quite set the flaps all the way up there we go um, uh, you would normally set a parking brake uh, I, I haven't bothered here but yeah you, you, this engines powerful enough to when it starts it could actually pull the plane forward um, I've actually got some physical rudder pedals here um, which I'm moving with my feet and they have toe brakes bit hard for you to see this but I can push down on each toe you can see them rotating just there uh, that will break either the left or the right wheel and that's how you steer on the ground as well you just break the inside wheel in the direction you want to turn um, but to engage the parking brake you would uh, put the um, parking brake out that lever in the middle there push the tow brakes in and let go of the parking brake and it's latched so I can rev this thing up a little bit now backfiring from that Merlin um, yeah uh, as I rev that up I'm not going to move anywhere so that's what you should do anyway so uh, the next thing we need to do we need the oil temperature to come up again if I just go and try and take off now the engine will just seize the oil's too thick we need it to thin out a bit uh, we need to get it really about 35 degrees uh, I wouldn't uh, before we're moving 40 degrees is kind of the minimum we want for takeoff um, so you will let that temperature just come up a little bit uh, what else can we do here I can turn on the wing position lights uh, that's turned on a green light on the right and a red light on the left um, it, because as the saying goes in aviation red is not right 
even though I've always thought red should be right, it's not. Uh, and then there's a tail position light, we'll turn that on as well, and that puts a white light on the, the tail. Um, so yeah, just so other aircraft can see where we are, it's always good practice. This little guy down here is the radio, very simple radio back in, a very typical kind of thing you'd find in a lot of the, the warbirds. Just an A, B, C and D. Uh, a would probably be air traffic control, uh, B would be your squadron maybe, C, I don't know, ground crew. <coughs> They're a very simple radio system in these. Um, so that's us pretty much ready to go. We're at 30 degrees. The other thing you can do here is bring the uh, RPM up to about 900, which is what we've done there, and that will warm it up a little quicker. I think the max you can go is 1200, so let's do that warm up you can get away with that any higher than that and it's uh, a bad idea for the engine <coughs> so um, yeah we're doing pretty good um, in terms of stuff to note just quickly let's go around here we got a clock up here we got a magnetic compass and a gyro compass the magnetic compass is obviously brilliant and very reliable but they're not very good when you're in a bank turn they tend to stick uh, whereas the gyro compass won't but the gyro compass does drift which is why you have both so you can it does drift out you can just correct it to make sure it's matching the uh, magnetic compass when you're straight and level uh, we have our speed in miles per hour not knots it was in miles per hour back then uh, altitude uh, which will tell us how high we are in feet we got a turn and slip indicator which tells us whether we're in coordinated flight or whether the rudder needs adjusting to make sure we're not flying uncoordinated it's quite an important one as well uh, the VSI, which is the vertical speed indicator, uh, this tells us in thousands of feet per minute uh, how high, how much we're climbing or, or descending. Uh, so the one marker up here would be uh, climbing at a thousand feet per minute, the one marker down here would be descending at a thousand feet per minute, and when it's on the zero we're not climbing or descending and flying nice and level. Very important one that. Uh, we got carb heat here, that's important. Uh, I don't think it's a problem for where we are today and what we're doing, but there are situations with the right humidity and temperatures where you could get icing in the carburetor. Don't want ice going into your engine, that will make for a bad day. Uh, so you've got to keep an eye on your carb temperature uh, in certain conditions anyway. And we've got a door down here to control the amount of heat that we send to the carb to keep it warm and within range. Um, I believe that's done by, uh, well I think it varies from design to, uh, plane to plane but uh, generally it's exhaust gases are uh, routed to heat up a shroud around the carb to do that job. Uh, we've explained that dial, we've explained the RPM and we've explained the manifold pressure, uh, we've also got coolant temperature there, again very important. Uh, coolant temperature goes off the chart, you know you're about pretty close to a seized engine. You can run this plane max, max pitch, uh, max RPM rather and max manifold pressure with good air speed to keep it all cool for about five minutes before you really start annoying your engine um, I wouldn't personally want to do that but I try and keep everything in the green as much as possible we're gonna be racing down the mountain today so you know we're on the edge a bit but as you're coming downhill we don't have to put on as much power as we would if we were racing in a straight level straight line at a level altitude um, so I think we're good now got 50 degrees of uh, oil temp let's get going so I'm gonna bring the power back I'm going to dab the uh, tow brakes to release the parking brake the last thing I'm gonna do here if I push the stick all the way forward it releases the tail wheel and allows the plane to caster makes it very easy to steer on the ground if I pull the stick all the way back it locks the tail wheel and helps again to keep us dead straight as we're picking up speed on the runway uh, certainly enough speed to where the rudder is effective uh, so that's important when you're starting your runway roll uh, and then in the middle it's about half engaged so useful so I'm gonna push this all the way forward I'm gonna give this a little bit of power and then I'm gonna, just gonna dab the left brake uh, and then I'm gonna dab the right brake and let's get that Merlin splutter because it sounds so cool when, one day when we're all electric those who remember we're gonna miss those noises I'm definitely gonna miss that noise now the uh, yellow taxiway line, you tend to do this in warbirds as well because it's a tail dragger and that big old nose is high up and you can't really see in front so you tend to zigzag to where you're going in tail draggers uh, to know what's out in front of you. It's a lot harder to see. Okay, should be good here. And then we're going to pull onto the uh, runway here in the south 
southerly heading. Let's bring around. Do my best to get her lined up. A little dab more right, and I think that's us pretty good. So, I'm going to pull that stick all the way back to lock the tailwheel. Last thing I need to do before we get going, just double check my trims are all good, which they are for takeoff. I'm going to uncage this style here. Now, this is our artificial horizon. Um, terribly unreliable, drifts a lot, but um, because it drifts a lot with this, it's usually a good idea to do it once you're in position, ready to take off. Do it as a last thing rather than let it uh, swing around and get out of calibration on the ground while you're taxiing. So, uh, that guy's good. Okay, so uh, prop uh, RPM is all the way forward. We're going to bring, uh, with the brakes on, we're going to bring up to 30 inches of manifold pressure, which is there. And now we're going to release the brakes and slowly put the power in so we don't lurch off to the right. Here comes the rest of the power. I'm going to centre the stick now. We've got some rudder authority and we should come off the ground. Lovely. Let's get this gear up. And we should have this, this red light down here shows the gear in transit. That should go out when all the gear's up and we've got a smooth underside, which it has, so we're we're good. Uh, I'm gonna climb a bit here, leave this takeoff power in, just back off a little bit of manifold pressure. Don't like being near red lines. You also notice I've left the canopy open uh, just because I love the sound. I think if you were doing a race at 200 mile an hour, you'd, you'd close it. But okay, so I'm going to start uh, backing off the prop RPM to about just in the top of the green here, about 2400 RPM, and I'm going to bring the manifold pressure down to about 33 inches, which is about there. And then let's get trimming this thing out. So you can see now that the turn and slip indicator. The tail is way off to the left, which means our nose is pointing right off in that direction, even though our plane is going in this direction, so we're out of trim. So I'm going to add, start centering this rudder trim. And as I do, you'll see that ball come back into the middle. So there we go, we're coordinated again. And we're going to take a turn to the left here. Now, one thing I added in this mission was I put in an orange smoke marker uh, to be set off when you take off uh, at the destination. Uh, the point at which we start the race and I don't know if you can see it here let me zoom in you see in the distance there's that orange smoke signal flare uh, that's where we're heading it saves me having to navigate if I put a smoke marker up um, I don't know if I've mentioned it the module uh, as well as being this P51 I'm, I'm in a, one of the purchasable modules this is the Syria map obviously Syria is very mountainous so it made for a great spot to find a somewhere to lay out a race course um, but we've got a bit of climbing to do. So, still need to trim in a little bit as we've picked up speed. Let's do that. And then I'm just going to bring my prop RPM further back now to about 2000 RPM, which will make it nice and efficient. And I'm just going to bring my uh, manifold pressure down a little bit. And let's trim down a bit, we're climbing pretty uh, rapidly here. See the VSI telling me we're doing about a thousand feet a minute. Which is about right. I think we can level off shortly, we're almost at the altitude, uh, target altitude. So, plane's pretty much in trim. Just going to start uh, heading just to the right of this smoke. There's a little valley there, that's kind of where we're aiming for. Uh, but yeah, great view up here. The flight controls just feel fantastic and I've done enough GA flying to certainly have an idea of what that should feel like and by far and away DCS is the closest uh, it comes to that feeling. They really do nail it. Okay, we're almost there. It looks, might look to you like I'm kind of heading into uh, the mountain here but we're, we're absolutely fine and we've got bags of power should we need it to uh, climb any faster but just don't want to abuse the engine I want to get the temperature in a nice comfortable place before I start the start racing this circuit because we're going to be pushing the engine quite hard 
Uh, everything else is kind of where it needs to be. Just approaching once we get over this uh, crest here. We should get some uh, a visual on the road that this uh, course kind of follows. So far so good. A little bit of low cloud but nothing to worry about. I think we're getting our way. Okay, we're over that crest. Any second. Oh, here's the road. You just see down over the left wing. So I want to bring the prop RPM up to 2600, which is where I want it to be for a nice, punchy, responsive uh, throttle. Let's start the left bank to follow this road. And then as we pick up speed, I'm going to need a little more left rudder trim. I think about 230 knots will be where we want it the entry there's the smoke marker and then there is there's our six pylons that are the start of the race course so let's tr attempt to get low and hopefully not crash okay so a little more left rudder needed and as I get lower as we hit these little ridges you do get a little ground effect kick from these uh, Flight physics really is just so brilliant in this game. Uh, this is a ludicrous course I've uh, come up with here. Nothing like this would ever exist in real life. It's far too treacherous, but you know, you can have fun in this. Now we've got a blind turn to the right here, so I'm going to start that early, which is down here. Roll out, and then we've got a diving left turn for the next gate. I have to put some power in here. This is a steep one. You can hear the barrels of the uh, the empty barrels of the the guns whistling as you pull hard G's on this aircraft. It was known for that. Knife edge through that gate. Gonna come around the valley here. I'm gonna back the power off with losing quite a lot of altitude through this valley with plenty of airspeed. Turning and pulling hard. And then we're gonna roll out about here. There's the next gates. Trying to keep low but not clip my wing on a tree, that would be a bad thing. Going through here, uh, we're definitely hooning now, what are we doing? Yeah, over 300 miles an hour. Pull some power out, it's going to make this next section tricky if I'm too fast. Uh, got a little bit of a slalom type thing here, and you do have to get on the angle of the pylons ahead before you hit the pylon you're going through. Let's turn for the next one. So far so good, and there's the next pylons up on that hill, so a bit of a climbing turn here. Start getting a little bit more technical now. Another blind descent over this. There should be some pylons, there they are, a little bit closer together. And then we've got kind of a sort of entrance to a split S here, because we've got to clear some electrical wires. But still get in for these, which we have rolling over and then pulling for these ones run this course so many times now I have to know it fairly well now I've got to stay on the outside of the ridge here and stop another knife edge through these and then straight on a left hand hard turn for the next set which is here oh, sketchy through these levelling out and then pulling the power because we've got a bit of descending to do here and then power in as we've got to climb and turn for these ones another hard bank then we're through and now down into the valley I'm going to back off the power here because the next section I want to try and go flat out so we're going round to the right where we should pick up the next smoke marker and pylons are there and then for this one we're going to need to go inverted and hard round to the left so pulling there's the invert through the gate and now some very close together pylons here so we've got to get knife edge through them which we have and pull for these ones roll out and now I'm going to put the power in and just try and do this fast and low for this section hopefully not stuff it up right at the end on the turn early and then again 
and I need to get on the turn early and try and avoid these trees. That would suck. Okay. Not too bad, not too bad. There's some fireworks to finish. And then what I'm going to do is when we finished up, I'm just going to trade some of this airspeed for altitude. Get on the climbing turn here. I was saying, okay, let's drop the nose a bit. That's uh, about 160 knots, which is pretty good. I'm gonna bring the gear down. There we go. I'm gonna start adding in some flaps. Let's come back on the power. That spluttering Merlin. Such an awesome, awesome noise. Add a little bit of trim here, rudder trim. Alright, there's 150 knots. Let's start the uh, slightly steep descent into this airport, but that's okay. It's about 130. I'm just going to add a little bit of power, I don't want to get too slow. As we start our flare here. Off the power, and I'm just gonna keep bringing it back, try and get a three point landing. Over flared a little bit. There we go, she's down. Stick all the way back, keep her straight and gently on the brakes so I don't nose over and ding the prop. Done that plenty of times. Yeah, it's quite a nice. Uh, it's a nice flight. It's uh, good fun running the race course. Uh, I will be putting this mission file in the description for anyone that happens to own the P51 module and the uh, Syria map. You can give that a go. See what you think. Set a time. See if you beat me. Beat me and mine. Uh, just do a final trick in the uh, P51, which is just to. Uh, do a nice little J turn here. Nice wide set landing gear. You can do that in this thing. Definitely can do that in a Spitfire. If you did that in a Spitfire, you would. Uh, <laughs> those landing gear are so close together, you just dig the wing into the ground and break it. Get a stern telling off. Um, but yeah, there we go. Lots of fun. So normally you'd wait uh, for the engines. You can see the engines pretty toasty here from the oil temperature. Coolant's good though. Um, You'd wait for this to come down a bit before turning it off. Obviously, we don't really need to bother about that. Um, but what we are going to do is shut this down. So we are going to take the mixture to cut off. That will shut down our engine. Uh, next thing we can do is turn off the fuel boost pumps and the fuel cutoff switch. Turn off our tail and wing lights. You can hear those doors closing now in there. Um, and then we can turn oh we can turn the magnetos off for sure. Let's do that. Don't need those on anymore. Um, close the guard on the starter, and then we're pretty much done. We can kill the generator. Go and the battery master. And then the last thing we do uh, is to pull the hydraulic pressure out, which we do with this handle. And when we do that, um, as the pressure falls out, those two inner uh, wheel cover doors that are held up by hydraulic pressure will slowly droop. Uh, so here we go. Down they go, and we're pretty much done. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I know it's something a little different. Um, but uh, there's I have pretty much all the modules in DCS and all the maps. Um, and I very much enjoy doing this kind of stuff so uh, that I was thinking of perhaps doing another video in the P47 because that's another fantastic massive it's a, it's a huge bird another another one of the warbirds but the 47 has a literally an enormous supercharger in it tons of power and uh, incredibly can, has a service ceiling of um, I think it's 37,000 feet so I'd really like to test that out um, so I think that can make a fun video so I can actually get a P47 above 37,000 feet which will require some engine management but um, 
yeah, we could do that perhaps in the Nevada map. Uh, take off for uh, I think you take off from Henderson Executive. We could go do that above Vegas and then land back at Nellis Air Force Base. That could be a fun one. Anyway, um, I hope some of you guys at least are still out there. Say hi in the comments. Uh, really great to hear from you. If you're new to the channel, please uh, consider subscribing and liking. That helps me out. And uh, say hello. I always read and respond to comments and very much appreciate it. Hope you're all well, guys. Take care for now. See you in the next one.